The principle of time dilation states that if there are two observers and one is moving at a constant velocity relative to the other, the observer who is moving will age slower than the stationary observer. But hold on. If the moving observer is traveling at a constant velocity, then they don't actually feel like they're moving at all. What's more is that they will actually see the stationary observer moving in the opposite direction at the same speed. So what gives? The two observers can't both be younger than the other, that doesn't make any sense. How can we possibly remedy this contradiction? As it turns out, this only actually seems to be a problem if the two observers are able to compare their watches at two different times. If they only compare once, neither can say who is older or younger at a later time. So let's say Isaac stays on Earth while Albert jumps on a spaceship and flies out to a nearby star and then turns around and comes back. On Albert's spaceship, he sees Isaac and Earth fly away from him and then turn around and come back as well. So which one will be younger when they reunite? Well, if we can find a way to definitively say whether Isaac or Albert was the one traveling, then we have the answer. Whoever made the journey should be younger, and whoever stayed still should be older. To do this, let's draw a space-time diagram in Isaac's frame. Now, on this diagram, we can draw Albert's trajectory according to Isaac as he goes out to the star, turns around, and comes back. In Isaac's frame, lines of constant time will just be horizontal. Each one of these lines corresponds to all of the things that happen at the exact same time in Isaac's frame. Let's say that there are also two probes, call them probe 1 and probe 2, that are not moving relative to Isaac. Now, let's say these probes pulse lights in regular intervals so that the light pulses will sit on horizontal lines of constant time in Isaac's frame. Taking into account a speed of light delay, Isaac may see one light flash before the other, but the interval between the pulses and which probe flashes first will always be the same according to Isaac. Now, what about Albert? The Lorentz transformations tell us that as he moves away from Isaac with a constant velocity, his lines of constant time will get slanted upwards. Similarly, as he moves towards Isaac, his lines of constant time get slanted downward. We can now draw these lines on our space-time diagram, not worrying about the region where Albert is accelerating, since this region doesn't need to actually play a role. And here we see the resolution to the paradox. When Albert is traveling away from Isaac, probe 2 flashes before probe 1 in Albert's frame. But when Albert is traveling towards Isaac, probe 1 flashes first. Since the distance between the probes never changes, and the flashes are always at the same intervals, this can only mean that Albert traveled in two different directions, so he has to be the one who took the trip, and will be younger when he comes back. Now let's say this a bit more formally. Since we can choose a frame where Isaac does not move for all time, we know that Isaac is in an inertial frame, or a frame moving at a constant velocity. However, since we had to perform two different Lorentz transformations to describe Albert's experience, one when he's moving away from Isaac and one when he's moving towards Isaac, we know that Albert's trajectory consists of at least two different inertial reference frames. Then we know that Albert traveled in two different directions while Isaac stayed still. Therefore, we know that Albert must be younger than Isaac when he returns. Now here's an interesting problem. Say that instead of the universe going on forever, it wraps back around on itself. All of the same rules of special relativity would apply, but now Albert can fly away from Isaac around the universe and meet back up with him. We can use a single Lorentz transformation to get between Isaac and Albert's reference frames, so we can conclude that Albert only traveled in one direction, so his frame is made up of a single inertial frame. How can we resolve the twin paradox now? I'm interested in what you think, so leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll answer this in a future video. Until then, thanks for watching and if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.